My name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech, everyday tech for everyday people. And in the past couple of weeks, I've done a number of videos on the Raspberry Pi. Now, I've even created a Raspberry Pi playlist, so you can check out that playlist here. But in some of those videos, I gave instructions on how to set up the Raspberry Pi from scratch using the Raspberry Pi imaging software. And then I gave some instructions on how to set up SSH, your Wi-Fi network, how to change your default password using some terminal commands. Well, a commenter, Liam, pointed out that you can set up the SSH and Wi-Fi passwords uh, in the imaging software itself. And I've been using the imaging software, the Raspberry Pi imaging software, since it came out. And I've even updated to the latest versions as they came out. But somehow I overlooked some of these advanced features that they added in. Now, I believe they added in these advanced features in 1.6. And then in 1.7, they actually made it more visible by creating a UI button so you can get to those advanced features very quickly. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick run through on some of these advanced features. And hopefully this will be helpful to you as you're creating your Raspberry Pi projects. Here we are in the Raspberry Pi Imager software. I'm using version 1.7.1, which is the latest version as of this recording. And at this point, I'm assuming that you've already inserted your micro SD card into your computer so we can image it using this piece of software here. So now we're going to choose the OS that we want. And usually for the projects that I feature on this channel, I'm usually going to use a Raspberry Pi that's headless, which means it doesn't have a desktop environment. So we're going to go ahead and choose Raspberry Pi OS Other, and we're going to choose the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which will give us no desktop environment, but just the features that we need. So we go ahead and choose that. At this point, now we have this button here where we can click on it and set the advanced features. I will say that the advanced features, you can set them only on supported OSs. So all the Raspberry Pi OSs should support the advanced features. But if we go to something like the Raspberry Pi emulators here, so I did a video on the RetroPie. If we select the version of RetroPie here, you can see that the button disappears. So we want to make sure that we have a supported OS that we can set these advanced features. And I'm going to go back to our Raspberry Pi OS Lite here. And now we can set the advanced features now. So we're going to go ahead and click the button here for the advanced features. And when you first click on it, I believe this is only on a Mac here, it'll ask you if you want to pre-fill the Wi-Fi password from your system keychain, basically taking some of your system settings uh, on your Wi-Fi and try to pre-fill it into the imaging software. I'm going to go, go ahead and click on no so we can just set it up manually here. And then I'm going to go through some of these features that we can set. So you have the option of putting all these settings for only the current session for or for every future session as well. I like to do it for the current session only because every project that I do is pretty unique and I like to start from scratch. So if we go through all these settings here, disable overscan has to do with the HDMI output from the Raspberry Pi. And then we have something here called the host name. Now by default, the host name is Raspberry Pi. And this has to do with the protocol using Bonjour, which the Mac and iOS devices have it by default. I believe a lot of Linux devices have it as well installed, but for Windows, you're gonna to need to install the Bonjour protocol which I would recommend doing if you do have a Windows device. So we can go ahead and set our host name here. This allows us to reach our Raspberry Pi without knowing its IP address. So I'm gonna set it to patrickpi.local here. Next, we can enable SSH, which I would definitely do. I'd use the password authentication. If we go down here, now we can set our default username and password. By default, if we don't set these advanced settings, the username will be pi and the password would be raspberry. And now we can set up our default username and password, and we don't have to do that later on. I would keep it as Pi, but uh, you can set your password to whatever you want. And then here is where we can configure our Wi-Fi network. So you would put your Wi-Fi network name in there and password. And then you wanna be able to set up your country code here. Uh, I already did some settings here. By default, it's set to Great Britain, but you can either choose it from the drop down here or you can go ahead and type in your default Wi-Fi country code. And then of course you can set your time zones here if you want to. Um, and I have it set to America, New York, which is correct. And then there are other things that you can do. This has to do with after you image your uh, micro SD card, you can have it play a sound. It 
by default it ejects the media so you can do all these different things here so this is one easy way to do all your advanced settings here at this point you can go ahead and hit save and now we're ready to write to our micro sd card now we're going to choose our storage which is our micro sd card make sure you choose the right storage device because this will delete everything on the device that you do choose and then when you go ahead and click on write this will take a few minutes to write the os now the beautiful thing about this is now everything that we put in our advanced features which includes enabling ssh changing our host name our default username and password our wi-fi information is now being written onto the micro sd card and we're ready to go so all you have to do is pop this micro sd card back into the raspberry pi and boot it up and you're ready to go with all those settings already set in the Raspberry Pi. Thanks for joining me on this short video. I hope you found this video helpful. It should cut down on your setup time as far as your Raspberry Pi, so you can go on to doing your Raspberry Pi projects here. Now, I do plan on doing two or three more videos on the Raspberry Pi. If there are other products you wanna see with the Raspberry Pi, leave a comment below. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.